Hey folks, my name is Ed Travers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwai. I'm also an anarchist. Let me explain. I believe that whatever my anarchistic tendencies are, they were planted, nurtured, and grown by the teachings of Jesus Christ. Because I think, I think anarchy is his way as well. Let me tell you where this is coming from. A couple of weeks ago, I stumbled across a very short clip from a sermon given by a guy named Sean Foyt. Now, Sean Foyt is a uh, pastor, minister, speaker, uh, and musician in a church, I believe, in California. Um, in this snippet from Right Wing Watch, he offers uh, he offers what he believes are just common sense reasons why Christians should be willing to adopt Christian nationalism as, as, as their identity, as, as who they are, as their political dream. He says, you know, and he speaks from the context of somebody saying to him, you're a Christian nationalist because you want, and he responds with, well, of course, that's what I want. I'm a Christian, aren't I? For example, you want the kingdom to be the government. Of course I do. I'm a Christian. Why wouldn't I? He says, you know, the argument is you're a Christian nationalist because you want God to control the government or, or you want God to control everything. And he says, well, of course I'm a Christian, aren't I? Yes, that's what I would want for what it's worth. As a Christian, I don't want God to be in control of everything. I believe God is in control of everything. I believe God is in control of every aspect of my life. I believe that God feeds me, God sustains me, God provides for me, God inspires me, God gives me hope, passion. God gives me everything I need to get through this day and into tomorrow. I believe that God is in control of every aspect of my life because I've given, I'm trying to give. God every God control of every aspect of my life. And that to me is everything because the only thing that really matters is what I can control and all I can control is me. That belongs to God. That's just a Christian take on that though. I don't want God to be in control of everything and everybody I believe God is in control of me. And that's what matters. The thing I really want to talk about though is his fourth point. What he says is, the argument being, you're a Christian nationalist because you only want believers to be the ones writing the laws. And he says, of course. Again, as a Christian, a Christian minister, Christian teacher, a believer in Jesus Christ as my savior, as my everything. But my first and the, and the most dominant thought about that statement is, why do Christians need laws? Why, why do Christians need, not only why do we need Christians writing laws, why do we need laws at all? What law could a government enact? What law could a person write? What law could a believer be inspired to offer? What law would surpass the law of Jesus Christ in my life? What law could make me, could hold me to a higher standard than the law that Jesus places on me? What law does a Christian need to obey in order to live a holy, righteous, abundant life? There is no earthly law. We, we need no earthly law to help us do that because 
of what Jesus has already taught us. So the answer to that question, why do Christians need laws or what laws do Christians need? We don't. I don't need a government or a person telling me that I need to live in a very particular way according to a very particular rule that, that, that there are guidelines that I must follow in order to be a good citizen of the state in which I live. The only law I, I, I suspect might be you know, a law that says you may not be a Christian. And even in that case, no law can stop me from being a Christian. I see no value in earthly laws as they apply to Christians. Because Jesus already calls me to the highest standard. Whether or not I live according to it is a different thing, but Jesus calls me to the highest standard. And I think that is the answer to the question then. Why do Christians need laws? Well, we don't unless we're trying to force others to live according to the way we believe, the way we interpret Scripture, the way we interpret the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's the only time laws would ever matter for a Christian, is if we're hoping, if we're desiring to enforce our way of life upon others. Historically speaking, rationally speaking, reasonably speaking, this was, is, and always will be a path to tyranny. And tyranny, whilst tyranny stands in opposition to free will, and free will is the way of God. We have a choice. We didn't have a choice. Well, there'd be no believers. There would simply be adherence. There would be no faith. There would simply be obedience. You're a Christian nationalist because you want believers to be the only ones right in the laws. Well, of course I do. I'm a Christian. As a Christian, I want to live in a world where laws are becoming less and less and less necessary. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray. I pray that all of us would be so fearless, so idealistic, so trusting, so loving, so forgiving. That through Christ, we could let go of our desire to control the people around us. That we could extend to them the same freedoms and liberties that we demand for ourselves. Amen. Nemaltus.